Hi, and welcome to At Home Art Lessons with the Art Groupies, where we develop great art habits. We're going to do some reflecting with Roz today, and we're going to reflect on the famous artist Gustav Klimp. And we're going to have this beautiful story told to us by his cat. So, Klimp and his cat. Written by Patrice Capetti and illustrated by Octavia Monarco. Gustav Klimp was born in Austria in 1862. To find out who he was, come meet his cat. Follow me into Gustav's studio. It is alive with color. Look at the paintbrushes he keeps in a vase and the reds and blues and colorful hues that spill onto the table. Smell the scent of paint, of oil, of canvas. You will watch Gustav paint, but he won't know you're there. I, of, I often watch him for hours. I meow loudly, I rub against his leg, and I scratch at the chairs, but he doesn't see me. He doesn't even hear me. He is absorbed in a world of color and canvas. Today, Gustav is painting a couple in love. Over the figures, he brushed in flowers of gold, the richest of colors. Roses and flowers of all kinds are painted into his pictures. Gustav is inspired by the gardens that bloom outside his windows. Early each morning, he takes me outside, and together we watch the buds open. Gustav loves to paint people, so he invites models to his studio to pose for him. I snuggle up against their legs and vie for attention, but Gustav has instructed the models to stay very still while he paints them. As you can see, when models come, Gustav is messy. Look at all the sketches he throws about the room. Cats, he says, catching me staring at the clutter. Painting people requires a great deal of practice. It seems to me that is also required a lot of paper. I often follow along at the museum why Gustav strides, um, studies ancient art from Syria, Greece, Egypt, and even China. Gusov says that looking at the paintings and sculptures of other artists help him as an artist. To learn to be, to learn to do better, I must see everything, he exclaims, even works of art that aren't so beautiful. Walking around the museum with a small red sketchbook, he pencils in notes and makes small drawings of the things he likes. The smile of a beautiful woman, the gentle arch of a doorway. Back at the studio, he will use these sketches to decorate the edges of his paintings and make them special. While splotches of, and, of swirls shape and shapes and golden and silver paint, Gustav creates a new style of art, different from the traditional paintings of the past. Other artists, friends of Gustav's, paint arches and sculptures, have helped him construct a building where his art and others and other new styles of art can be displayed. These artists have called themselves successionists because 
They do not want to make traditional art. They do not like to see the same thing over and over again. Not everyone appreciates the new style of Gustav and his friends, however. While I am admiring Gustav's new building, a man next to me points at the roof and grumbles, Cats! What kind of roof is that? A golden cauliflower? I don't reply. I am just pretending that the cauliflower is on his head. <laughs> Gustavs has taught me that it takes courage to try something new. When he was asked to paint three large works for the University of Vienna, he painted what he felt, using vibrant color and shapes of all sizes. He portrayed love and life, and sadness too. The university professor, expecting traditional art, well, they got a little angered at Gustav's work. Their criticism is so harsh that Gustav buys his paintings back from them. Cats! What's important to me is not how many people like my art, but who appreciate it, he says to me, winking. Perhaps he is asking if I like it. Today we are off to Italy where we will discover new artists and see wonderful sights. I wander the streets of Vienna to look for other cats, but Gustav is interested only in art. He keeps me in his sight as we enter an ancient church. There before us, a magnificent mosaic made up of thousands of glimmering colored glass. Fragments shine. Even I stop to admire it. Today enchanted, totally enchanted, though I understood next to nothing about art. Gustav contemplates it for hours dreaming of how to use the designs in a masterpiece. Though he enjoys short trips to sightsee, Gustav's real travels take place inside his studio. He is transported to distant lands as he sweeps paint onto paper and detailed intricate patterns of circles and and sequence. Today he painted Amelia, his closest friend. I don't mind that they are sometimes walking out into the garden alone because now there are seven more cats in the house. Plenty of friends for me. Emily and her sisters who owned the most famous dress bo dressmaker's boutique in Vienna, often model for Gustav. There were elaborate, fashionable dresses from London, and they are always changing their clothes. Gustav meticulously paints every detail of their dresses, but he doesn't pay much attention to his own attire. Every day, he wears the same worn-out smock. Today, we are going on vacation together with Emily and her family. We head for the shores of Lake Atentris. Though we are supposed to be taking a break from our normal routine, Gustav cannot stop being an artist. Even here he works. His favorite spot to paint is in the middle of the lake, where he is fascinated 
by the reflections. He see he sees curves of beautiful women swimming in the in the waves. But all I can see is bright blue water. Back home, Gustav paints people and patterns, but on holiday, he paints nothing but landscapes. Maybe he is taking a vacation after all. When we return to Vienna, Gustav hurries back to the studio, ready to create new compositions. He has much energy to paint these days. He says he feels called to battle the sicking, sickness, green, greed, and unhappiness in the world through his paintings. Gustav knows that art, poetry, and music have the power to make people happy. I imagine as uh, I imagine him as an armed soldier fighting for happiness, leading an army of Viennese citizens right into one of his vibrant paintings, per perhaps into the mural he painted in the honor of the great musician Beethoven. Gustav soon returns to painting figures. I try to play with the fancy rich women who are modeling in extravagant clothes, but Gustav reminds me that they must keep still. Living with a great artist is not always easy. One afternoon, I peek over Gustav's shoulder as he sketches. I watch as the forms of a man and a woman emerge, clutched in an, in an embrace. I already know this is going to be a masterpiece. Gustav cro uh, crafts the most elegant and delicate garments in this painting and layers on many ounces of gold, as if to say, Love is all the wealth you need. As I look more closely at the finished work, I realize that Gustav was inspired by the designs of the shiny glass shapes of the mural we saw in Italy. Gustav is, lo is loyal and generous. Last year, he learned that a local shop was going bankrupt, so he decided to help the owner by purchasing all of his art supplies there. This afternoon, he is lost in thoughts and does not hear the voice of the beggar in the street. I nudge him uh, gently, and he rushes outside to give the poor man a coin. He always gives money to the needy even when he does not want to be disturbed. He leaves a bowl of coins outside his door for them. I think it is a bit strange that the more gold Gustav puts in his paintings, the less he keeps for himself. Mostly Gustav is full of life. I often hear him laugh, and I love to watch the vigor of his hands swirling colors together. But he is quiet at the moment. Cats, he says, while scratching my neck. I am afraid that the youth students no longer like my style of art. He looks off into the distance. I don't even know if they remember me. Under his gentle touch, I purr loudly, reminding him that he will not be forgotten. When I look up at the easel after my nap, I am surprised to see that Gustav has created a painting in a completely different style. Soft lines and gentle colors 
have replaced the decorative circles and sequins and gold paint. I don't have the gift of the, spoke, of the spoken or the written word, cats, Gustav says to me later that day, especially if I have to say something about myself or my work. But whoever wants to know something about me as an artist, he continued, gesturing at his paintings that lie scattered about the studio, they ought to look carefully at my pictures and try to see in them what I am and what I want to do. As usual, I don't reply. I simply breathe in deeply and inhale the scent of oil, of paint, and of canvas. Gustav Klimt died in 1918. Here are some of his paintings. Judith, Cradle, Love, Portrait of Adele, and Portrait of Emily. And here's a picture of Gustav and his cat. I hope you enjoyed Gustav and his cat.